a quick little video now to show you how to find just the highest set of values from a query. Again, we'll have a quick look at the table to have a look at the information we've got. We've got a database of vehicles with the price of the vehicle, and we've got a table of repairs showing which repairs have been done to those vehicles. We'll create a simple query in Design View and add the tables we're interested in. In this case, we're going to add two. We'll add the repairs and the vehicles. Notice that because these tables were linked, there's a relationship between them. That link shows here. That allows us to have consolidated data from the two tables. So let's go ahead and add some fields. I want some information from the vehicles table. I want the registration number. Um, the model of the car the manufacturer and the price and I want to know some information about when it was repaired so I want the mechanic that did the job and the date of the repair. Let's have a look at the data and see how we're getting on. That looks good, we've got 10 filtered records and there's the date of repair and the price. Why only 10 records? If you remember in the table, if you were had bright eyes, you will have noticed that there was a lot more than 10 vehicles. 14, in fact. It only shows the 10 because they are the only vehicles that had a repair on them. So if you remember, if I go back to design view of the query, that's about the join between the two tables. And we can adjust that join using these options to have um, different effects applied to that join to display the data in different ways. If you're not remembering what that is about, go back and have a look at the join video. So what I want to do with this query is find the price of the vehicles. But I just want to find the, the most expensive two cars or the most expensive five cars. And we can do that in design view by looking at this top values box. If I click on the drop down, you'll see that it will display the top five results, or the top 25 results, or the top 5% of results. And of course, we can type into the box as well. So if I want to show the top two results, then I can just put a two in that box. Now the design doesn't need to be altered because this is built into it. If I switch now into datasheet view, you'll see it's only going to display two cars that are the most expensive. Let's just go back and have a look at that again. Remember I said they were the top two values, but they're not the most expensive. Let me show you that, what I mean. I'm going to change the top values back to all and have a look at all the repairs. And you can see we've got a vehicle there that's 7,000, 9,000. So it certainly didn't pick up the two most expensive. So what's going on there? Keep your eye on these two. They're the top values in the list. Switch that back to two. And have a look again. There they are. It's the top two values, literally the top two in the list. So why is that very useful? Well, we can combine that with our sorting. If we change the sort to ascending, first of all, we'll have a look and see what that does if we see all the results with the price in ascending order. There we can see the values laid out in ascending order. So we're going back to the data sheet view. If I change that now to show the top two values, remember it's the top two in the list, which if they're sorted in ascending order, that means the lowest first. Then in this rather bizarre Microsoft way, the top two in the list in ascending order is actually going to be the lowest.
prices. Let's have a look. Yes, it is the lowest prices. If we want the highest prices, we can sort in descending order. That means the highest price first going downwards from the highest price. Still look at the top two. And there we have the most expensive. So that's a useful way of using, obviously, a query to find the top values or the lowest values in a list. And of course, you can combine that with sorting and criteria.